So I'm going to show you the best way to draw a eukaryotic cell. And for this video, I'm using the example of a plant cell. Um, this differs a little bit to an animal cell, although most of the, the organelles, the structures within the cell are the same. Um, OK, I'm going to start off by drawing the plasma membrane. Uh, plant cells, as you may have seen in an onion cell, tend to be, tend to sort of have these, um, tend to have sort of angles on them like this, okay, where they connect with other cells. Now, when I draw this, I'm taking care to fill in and make sure that I connect the sides of the, the plasma membrane properly. Um, the plasma membrane, I'll label it, Make sure that your labels connect exactly to the um, structure that, uh, that they refer to. Um, I'm drawing on a whiteboard, but you should use a ruler and a pencil. And I'm going to label this the plasma membrane. It's also called the um, cell membrane. In my bacteria video, I called it a, uh, a cell membrane. But I'm just showing you that it can also be a plasma membrane. Okay, something that uh, plant cells have that animal cells do not have is a cell wall. Um, now, the cell walls of plant cells is sort of um, continuous with the cell wall of the cell next to them. So I'm going to draw them like this. Um, and this just represents the fact that, for example, here, uh, this is the cytoplasm of the next cell. There's a cytoplasm of the next cell. The cell wall belongs to both of these cells. Um, when you draw the cell wall, try and keep the thickness as consistent as you can. Uh, you don't need to use a ruler to draw the cell wall because it's not dead straight. Like this. Okay. Um, so here's my cell. Um, the, the function of the cell wall is to give the cell structure um, so, for example, plants, they don't have bones. Um, their cells have the cell walls, and that helps them to stand upright. Um, the cell wall does not control what goes in and out of the cell. That's the function of the plasma membrane. The cell wall. Um, in plant cells, the, um, the cell wall is made out of a molecule called cellulose. Right. Um, Okay, an important structure um, is the nucleus. Now, a lot of people draw a nucleus like this. That's not exactly right. Um, the nucleus is actually made up of two membranes. So I'm going to draw another membrane around it like this. And also, it's got little pores in it, so like little holes that allow um, RNA from the inside to go out. So I'm going to draw these little pores in it here. Okay, now the, um, the chromosomes, of course, are in here. Now, those chromosomes and those sort of sausage shapes or the X shapes, um, you only see chromosomes look like that when the cell is dividing. Um, most of the time, you're just going to see a sort of grainy appearance in the nucleus, and that's the chromatin. So that's the DNA that is sort of uncoiled, attached with, uh, with proteins. Um, it gives you that sort of uh, grainy look. There's often a, another area within it, a sort of a darker, more intense area, that's called the nucleolus. So this part here, I'm not going to call it the nuclear membrane, this is the nuclear envelope, because it's made up of two membranes and it's got these pores in it. Um, and the structure overall, I'm just going to call the nucleus, like that. Okay, the nucleus is where the DNA is kept, um, and the DNA, of course, is what controls um, what proteins are produced, and the proteins controlling all the mechanisms happening inside of the cell. Um, now, a large part of a, um, a plant cell is often made up of um, a vacuole, Okay. Now, the function of the vacuole can vary a lot depending on the, um, on the function of the particular cell and wh where the cell is in a plant. It can be used for storage of certain compounds. It can also be used as a, uh, where waste um, products 
go to because of course plants don't have a sort of a urinary system like mammals do and they don't necessarily have a way of getting rid of waste and so waste products are stored in the uh, in the vacuole um, animal cells uh, can also have a vacuole but it's normally pretty small okay other important structures that you'll find in a plant cell are um, um, chloroplasts, okay, a chloroplast like the nucleus has a double membrane like that and then it has these little structures in it called thylakoid, these thylakoid membranes like this okay, and that is a chloro Last. Okay, the chloroplast contains the pigment called chlorophyll, which is what's green, um, and that's where photosynthesis takes place. Photosynthesis is the process where plants use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide um, and water into um, sugars and oxygen. The sugars they use either as a food, an energy source, but also they can convert sugars into other molecules that they can. Uh, they can build their molecules from. Um, it's also going to have a mitochondrion. Now, an incorrect way of drawing a mitochondrion is like this. Okay, a lot of people just draw a circle with like a little sw swiggy snake thing in it. Um, that's not right. When you draw a mitochondrion, it has two, it's made up of two membranes. It has an outer membrane and then it has an inner membrane. The inner membrane is invaginated, which means it's got these like little finger-like projections that stick out into it like that. Mitochondrion. Okay, that's an O N. The function of the mitochondrion is for cellular respiration. So that's where the cell takes uh, sugars and oxygen, converts them into carbon dioxide and water, and uses that process to make ATP that gives energy to run um, other functions within the cell. I'm just drawing one chloroplast and one mitochondria, but there's probably going to be many in the cell, but there's only ever uh, one nucleus. Okay, another structure that is typically found near the nucleus sometimes even connected to the nucleus, is this, the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, I'll write it like this. Endoplasmic reticulum. Um, there's two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's what's called a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and then there's a rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum has little ribosomes all over it. Um, the function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum is to synthesize proteins that are going to be secreted from the cell. Now, coming off of the endoplasmic reticulum, there's sometimes a little part of it like this will bud off, Okay, so it'll form its own little container. Those little containers can move around the cell. Um, those are called vesicles. Um, if you see a cell that, that secretes, for example, a protein like um, a hormone or an enzyme, you would see maybe hundreds of these little vesicles um, that contain the enzyme that has been produced in the endoplasmic reticulum and they move through the cell. Some of them will move to another organelle that looks quite a lot like the endoplasmic reticulum, but the, the flattened sacs are not connected to each other. Okay, it looks a bit like this. Um, that is called the Golgi apparatus. A vesicle here might move and join with the Golgi apparatus and the proteins inside can be um, changed and modified. This marks the end of period A4. They can be changed and modified 
and then some of those vesicles, for example here, they can bud off like that. They can fuse with the plasma membrane um, and their contents will be secreted into the environment. Um, now, I mentioned here that there would be ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. There might also be uh, ribosomes that are not attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We call these um, free ribosomes because they're not attached to anything. And I'm just going to write here that these are ATS. ATS refers to the size. In prokaryotic cells, there are 70S ribosomes. But in eukaryotic cells, the ribosomes are um, 80S. Um, another organelle that uh, you might see come up sometimes, um, it's really like a type of uh, vesicle, um, and it's called a lysosome. It's really just a vesicle that contains digestive materials. Um, the lysosomes can be used to, to break open release those digestive enzymes to uh, destroy the cell if that's necessary. For example, if the cell's been attacked by a virus. Um, I think that contains pretty much everything you need for a plant cell. So we'll leave it there.